Welcome to another episode of Inside the Barrel, where John and I talk behind the scenes of ServiceNow architecture, being a consultant, and just all around, um, all around conversations about ServiceNow. Uh, <laughs> yes, all today, around conversations. Yeah, today we actually have some special guests, which are really awesome. Um, I'm currently going through the, the Certified Technical Architecture uh, program. And we had a class this week on webinar uh, tips, and so I thought we would just jump right in and do a live stream with with some of my uh, cohort. So John's going to bring them in so that we can introduce them. <laughs> what well, I I kind of lost you there on your audio. What did you say? Oh, do you want to bring them in, and I'll we'll introduce. Yeah, them. yeah. So. I'll, I'll let each of them go and just give you know their name, the company, uh, and we'll kind of jump right in. Um, all right, so I'll, uh, I'll start then. So hello guys, um, uh, my name is Lucas Guarino. I work for a company called CrossFuse here in the UK. We also run a practice in the uh, in the US. Um, currently, I'm a ServiceNow principal technical consultant there, and I've been working with the platform for seven years and a half now. Um, yeah, excited to be here. Thank you, guys. So, everybody, uh, my name is Adrian Hardan. I'm the founder of DevHD, a small ServiceNow practice in uh, Romania. I've been working with ServiceNow for the past eight years, um, working as a solution architect, part of uh, the CTA program in Doria. Hi, everyone. My name is Mohammed Ziad. Uh, I'm currently working in uh, Saudi Arabia for a service partner called as Unicom. I have 10 plus years of experience and uh, I am a service consultant. Awesome. So in our in our CTA program, they challenge us to do presentations in 10 minutes. So we have eight minutes to explain service now's <laughs> architecture and scoped <laughs> applications. Uh, so we're going to see if we can just jump right in and, and do a quick high level overview of a lot of these. The use case I want you to think about or the use case that was presented to us is really around banking and like how to support like a multi uh, global or multinational uh, company and making sure that the right security architecture is, is in place for them. So John wants to share my screen. Beautiful. And so I know we normally don't do a scripted one, but I threw in a quick presentation. Um, so we'll go through these slides so you can see it and have it while we then I'll jump into and doing demos. Um, so the first thing to know that's really important about ServiceNow is their shared security model. And pretty much what that really means it boils down to is that the infrastructure and the physical security, like ServiceNow will manage those data centers for you. You don't need to. Almost everything else is a joint or on the customer's responsibility in order to, to manage and support. And so, you know, ServiceNow is, is multinational and so it's uh, uh, worldwide. So it's, it's good to know where your data center and uh, service is stored. So as for the security architecture, there's really three layers that is really important to talk about. There is the internet service layer or also called the network layer, the application layer and the database layer. So we'll kind of dive into each of those, but at a high level, like understanding where uh, the, the configuration is, is really important in the ServiceNow space. So at the internet or the network layer, just some things to know is all the traffic's encrypted. Uh, there's IP access control. Um, the IP access control is actually controlled at the application layer, like in, this, in the tool, but just know that you have that capability. And then the unique thing, and that is normally useful to know about really large enterprises, is edge encryption. And so the idea is if you didn't want certain data to be stored on ServiceNow's server, you can use edge encryption um, in order to encrypt it before it gets to ServiceNow service. So in the banking situation, there may be things where you can't have customer data in a certain data center. You could, in theory, use edge encryption in order to, to solve for that. Um, the application layer, so there's a lot in the application layer, and this is most of the time where all of the things are configured. So whether that's your pre-login, your authentication, your authorization, or your instance hardening, or your or platform encryption, we'll kind of dive into that in the demo, but just know that there's a, a lot of different ways that you can um, configure the application in order to support your use case. 
And then the database layer, this one's really the easiest one because it's just in a standard of database encryption. So encrypting data at rest um, and decrypting it in memory. Um, every instance is uh, supported for this and there's a small impact to performance, but it's very minor. Um, as for like full disk encryption, it's just essentially from protects you from physical theft of the hardware um, or the storage itself. And so I, I have this chart up here on talking about the differences. I'm not going to go dive into all the differences on, on this, but just know that there, this, this little chart is useful for you to understand it. I think the biggest thing that I like to remember is platform encryption is also known as like role-based encryption. So definitely keep that in mind when they talk about platform encryption. So I'll jump into the instance and, uh, and let's just go through a demo of a, of a few things. So the first thing I want to show is uh, Instance Security Center. So in Instance Security Center, if you've never used it, I'll show you how you get to it. But it kind of talks about a lot of different areas in, uh, in the instance that you can harden or you can make sure that your security is up to, up to standards. So for example, in the hardening section, it talks about like different things that ServiceNow provides as best practices that you can then you know, configure or change if need be, right? So, this is a really useful tool to start with. Is once you install ServiceNow, just jumping right into the instance hardening. You know, as we talked about before, IP access controls. Um, so IP access controls in the in the system allows you to configure which IPs can, can access the system. So that's useful in cases where it's a private or only internal. You want it behind a VPN. You could do something around that. As for the pre-login and in the login side of things, there's installation exits and this notion of redirect rules with SP entry. So with uh, installation exits, you can configure or change how login works. So by an IP address, by a role, or by um, something related to like a device or location, you can use um, instant installation exits for. Um, the SP entry is normally done through redirect rules, so there's properties that you can set, so you can set the page.script or the first page.script in order to define where someone's routed um, on the system as well. And that, um, how you configure that is through this uh, script include. I do really wish one day ServiceNow will make this uh, a better configuration. Um, and then lastly, around security, there is these high security settings that you can look through and, and configure and turn on and off as necessary for the requirements of your organization. So kind of moving past that, we, there's this, this shout out to data class. And the only reason I bring that up is like, if you think about labeling your PII or labeling certain key classifications on fields, you can essentially create data classifications and then apply those to certain fields. So in this case, I created a data class called PII, and this will allow you to, to, to click on it and see that this is applied to some super secret field on incident. So that's kind of uh, that, most of the security behind that. Um, we don't have enough time to jump into encrypted fields or platform uh, encryption, but what I'm just gonna show here is if I uh, elevate in order to, to do it, is that you can create context and then apply those contexts to roles. So in this case, I have this context for the super secret field, and it's applied to the IT, like I named it a ITIL admin only, and then on the, uh, the ITIL admin, you're able to uh, assign this context. That's really useful if you wanna hide or encrypt certain fields or show and hide based on like who is accessing the system or that form. Um, so now we'll kind of switch back into um, going into the scoped applications. And so like, what is a scoped application? For the, in the basic sense, it's just an organization of resources. So it's just like a folder that you have that has permissions on who and who can access it. So like the steps to build it, to think about migrating or creating, it's very simple. You name it, you then create the files that you want underneath it. You set the access levels based on who wants to access it or what other applications want to access it. And then you add you know, you actually build it with your logic and design. And so there's a couple different methods here. ServiceNow is recommending, you know, roam forward to link your things to, to Git repositories and publish through the application repository. For people that are around update sets, you know that those existed from 2016 and are still there. Um, and then John's favorite topic around cross-scope privileges. 
this is the reason it's John's favorite topic is because if you ever work in the HR space, you know a lot about this. And so there's there's a couple different things <laughs> <laughs> about access tracking or restricted caller access that defines that the, the, the fine green control or if you just need generic one. Um, and so some things you want to think about when you think of scoped applications is can you just like turn off you know restricted access? You probably don't want to do that because that um, creates a security gap and then it also doesn't show you that like you're building your thing um, the, the correct way. And then it, you also have other securities like ACL. So even if you did turn it off, you your ACLs may still block the thing that you need. And the nice thing is a service that will generate these restricted caller accesses for you based on your um, based on you developing in your dev instance. And so some things that you want to like keep in mind is like relevant personas, documentation related to that, any integrations, you know, reusability. So when you're building your scoped applications, you want to think about all the things that may be useful for you before you even start. And so I know we're running short on time, so I'll just quickly jump into the, the scoped applications. So the really the things that you, you probably will uh, uh, control is around the custom application itself has this application administration. That's one area of security where it prevents the system administrator from it. And then this run, uh, runtime access tracking. So those are the two. This is an example of a scope that's here versus a, I have an example here of a global scope. And then what's um, where the cross access scopes actually get generated is while you're developing, they actually get generated here. So on this restricted caller access privileges and um, also on the, the cross scope privileges if you needed to define it at a higher level. So I know that was a blast in, <laughs> in 10 minutes, but I hope that at least gives you some context on some of the security architecture and on the um, and on scoped applications and how those two um, mesh well in in the service now's ecosystem. What do you think, John? Are you now an expert on security? Uh, I'm amazed that you got all that information in so fast. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of information, and you're so right. I honestly have so much trouble with caller restricted records. I do not like the way they work a lot of the time. And yeah. <laughs> I also agree with you on SP entry page. I, I can't wait till that's redone in, in a better fashion. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. It's, it's, it's just definitely pain points that I've seen in the, in the uh, ecosystem. So Yes, it's a huge pain point from, a port, from the portal side anyways. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, let's, we'll cut this one short so that we don't get in trouble. Um, and no one, uh, no one hates us for it. But I do appreciate everyone coming <laughs> on and supporting. <laughs> yeah, come back for one that we like talk for an hour and we like dive into like encryption in one, right? Or um, you know, any one of these topics we could probably have in a whole session on. So, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, cool. Cool. All right. Thanks again. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.